I don't really know how to even start this because it's been three months. I I do apologize. I wanted to write down everything that's like happened in the past couple of months just to kind of go through what's been going on in life. Posting on YouTube is something I really enjoy doing, but I have had absolutely no time to film videos and make them as quality as I want them to be. Really been working on my business and upgrading that, so kind of just had to push YouTube to the back for now, which I'm hoping to not have to do in the future. But I also think that sometimes casual videos are fun to watch as well, so I know my jacket's in the back. That's great. Oh. <sighs> off of the aesthetics here. So I made my list. It's not like incredibly long, but I'm gonna separate it into categories. If you're like someone who only wants to hear about gear stuff, you can skip to this part. If you're someone who wants to just hear about my life, you can stay for the beginning because that's what I'm gonna start with. And if you're someone who wants to hear about travel, then go to the very end because I'll talk about that last. <laughs> I'm gonna start with just a life update. Um, one of the biggest ones being I am now an aunt, which is so exciting. My sister had a baby back in March, which he is just the cutest little squish. Oh my gosh, we get so many pictures in the group chat. He is, I, I have no words. He's just absolutely adorable. To be there a couple days after he was born, which was just so special. It's just a real thing to like know that you're getting older. Everyone says that, but wow, do I feel like old, old. Life is weird. I think that's really it for my life. Otherwise, I've just been crazy busy with senior shoots and grad shoots. It's been a little overwhelming, I'm gonna be honest. I've just been booked back to back, not only with that, but also in second shooting weddings for different friends. I've also been doing some engagement shoots for couples that I'm shooting their weddings coming up in the fall. Those have been fun, just getting to meet my couples and learn how they interact with each other so that I'm prepared for their wedding day. Also really been working hard on upgrading my website, which is fully live now. So if you guys wanna check that out, it is all of my photography business just on my website. Got a nice little refresh update from last year so I worked really really hard on that fixing all of that you're welcome to check that out in the description other than that I basically just been second shooting weddings with friends which has been fun as well getting to do different venues and different couples and meet all these new people so that has been awesome as well I go ahead and move into the gear side of things because there is a couple of things that I wanted to talk about so if you're a gear lover welcome to this section I have to get these things so I can like show you Oh my gosh. Moving on to the gear section of this life update. I did get a couple new things, not too much new. I haven't really been wanting anything new. There is one thing I got though that I am really excited about that has been fun to use. It's a 51.2. This is the EF version. I did not want to drop 2K on the RF version. I have had friends that have it and it is gorgeous, but I can't. I didn't want to spend that much money. I did find one used on MPB and got one of these. I have been loving it. It, used, it was about $900, almost $1,000, which is honestly not too bad for around like $1,300 right now. I wanted to get it used because I knew that maybe in the future I would sell these eventually to upgrade to RF glass. For the moment, I just wanted to have a 50 that was really good quality. I do have the 51.8. I just didn't feel completely comfortable giving photos out when I already have other L series glass that I think looks better. I also really have been loving the 50 focal length over 35. Blurry and journalistic photos are the move right now and everyone's shooting on 35. Hi, future Leah editing here. I know that lots of people don't necessarily shoot on 35, but I feel like everything I've seen in my Instagram feed at least has been like insanely blurry, really journalistic photos compared to like the fine art style, which is what I've moved towards. So if you shoot on 35, I love your stuff, but it's just not what I've particularly been liking at the moment. That's what I meant. <laughs> but I have been loving my 50 and 85 more. I'm glad because I originally did and then I was trying to follow what everyone else was doing and that's just like not, not what you gotta always do. I just wanna see a comparison of the 50 1.2 versus the 50 1.8 EF version. Let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to make that video. <laughs> okay, the next thing I wanna talk about is film cameras. I wanna see if anyone has any opinions. One, on film stock. I have been using the Kodak Color Plus. Um, this is actually like the only one I've ever used. It's the only one I could find in store because usually when I'm getting film, I'm just getting it to have along. I'm not really like specifically shooting on it. I also have is the Fujifilm Superior Extra 400. This is the one I want to try and use when I go on a trip coming up, which I'll talk about in a second. This is the Canon Sure Shot. I thought it was good. The quality like obviously isn't going to be amazing for like Paying $1.50 for this, I was like kind of amazed at finding this at a thrift store. Really easy to like put in your pocket. It's kind of like a digital point and shoot camera. Obviously wish that it wasn't broken in the back, but honestly, my film still turned out fine if I just duct taped it closed. I have a Minolta X700. I've been doing some research on this the last week or so, and I ordered batteries for it because I was like really excited to use this, and it's one I wanted to try the Fuji on. It won't turn on, which just makes me so sad. I have a 45 millimeter and I have a 24 to 70. 
and I just don't know what's wrong with it. I went to a camera store probably to figure it out, but I also saw a lot of people have electronic problems with it that it's just like better to buy a new one. I really want to use it. I just don't know how to fix the issue. I definitely need to take it in and it's in it's in such good condition. I just want to be able to use this. So definitely need to look into that. Last but not least, this is the one I have been using for any film stuff that I know it's going to work fine on. This is the Minolta Maxim HTSI Plus. I think that's an H. I have a 35 to 80 zoom on this to go down to 5.6, which for me is like, eh. And this was another one passed down from generations and having fun using it, but obviously would love to find something with a different aperture. I'm sure I could find lenses for this. Also kind of want to go for one that isn't completely digital. I feel like there's more of a... There's more fun to it when you have more of the antique ones, but a real film camera, you know? Any film stock recommendations or film camera recommendations, please let me know in the comments below. All right, last but not least for my gear. This isn't really gear, so I do apologize if I, if you feel like I led you on in this, but I did find some fabric for flat lay mats for wedding details. I just have to share because I just made a wedding detail box video and didn't have these. I found at Hobby Lobby these rolls of deco vinyl. If you're a wedding photographer who is looking for flat lay mats, please go to Hobby Lobby and go get this. It's $10 a yard, entire roll, which has a lot in there. It's just gorgeous. They look amazing. They have a bunch of different colors you can get. I couldn't believe I found this. Do you have this color? This is just the white. And then I also picked up the beige, which just looks so nice and sleek. If you try and look up flat lay mats, they are close to like $120. You know, that is hard work, well earned. It's also just not in my price range for getting a flat lay mat. They have just been amazing. So if you're a wedding photographer needing a flat lay mat, Go to Hobby Lobby. Last thing we are gonna talk about is traveling, which I am so excited for. Not this week, but next week, I'm going to Birmingham, Alabama to go visit a friend, which I'm so excited to do. Hoping to shoot there as well. I think it would be fun to do a styled shoot in the South, which is kind of where I've been wanting to shoot really bad, somewhere in the South. And after that, in the summer, we are also going to New York, which I am so excited for. So I'm hopefully gonna be vlogging or capturing some behind the scenes of those trips for you guys. I have never been to New York before, and I know it's gonna be crazy. We're going to be in the city in the Hamptons, which I just cannot wait for. So stay tuned for that if you wanna see any of those trips. Someone yell at me in the comments to post about them because I wanna keep giving content and I just need to make myself do it. So scream at me in the comments to film my trips. Okay, sounds good. Other than that, that is pretty much it for my life update. If you really wanna stay updated with things, make sure you follow my photography Instagram. That is where I've been posting a lot right now. If you also wanna follow my personal Instagram, you can also follow that right here as well. Do you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel? That's about it, right? Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me along the way, and I will see you guys in the next video.